No, the Dodgers spending spree did not ruin Major League Baseball. Stop it. The Chargers cut a team captain. Just in time for Festivus. And Bronny James is slowly getting his conditioning back with USC Hoops. Good morning. I'm James. This is your daily dose of sports and snark for the greatest sports city in the world, Los Angeles. This is the Faithful Angelino's Morning Report. So it is December 23rd, 2023. I am obviously back in St. Louis, misery, where I'm going to be here for a week, working through the holidays. Totally sucks for me. But what doesn't suck? Talking LA sports. This channel is growing, by the way. We added another new subscriber to the Angelino Familia. Thank you guys. I totally appreciate you. And if you like being in the know about LA sports, click the clack the like button. Click the clack the subscribe button. There's a notification bell. Hit that and let you know we drop new content. Sharing is caring. Let people know we exist. And by all means, comment. You guys already know this. I do my best to get back in touch with you and we can have a conversation about what's going on. Before we go through the news and notes, though, a look at the scoreboard. UCLA basketball has now fallen under 500. Yikes. They fall to Maryland 69-60 over at Pauley Pavilion. Sebastian Mack led the Bruins with 17 points. But if you recall, we were talking earlier in the season how Coach Mick Cronin was calling out Adam Bona, saying, we get it, you're a sophomore, but with all these new players, you're a team leader, we need you to produce. So what did Bona do last night? Eight points and four rebounds. Something tells me Cronin has a point. Meanwhile, today, a pretty solid schedule. I got to tell you, the Bills are at the Chargers at 5 o'clock tonight. Do yourself a favor. Root for third string center Brendan Hymas. The fellow has only played 46 snaps in his career. 23 of them, by the way, came when the Chargers got beaten down in Las Vegas about a week and a half ago. So this guy's fighting to prove something. If you're looking for an inside person to root for that you haven't heard of, consider Brendan Hymas or Hymas. <laughs> the Lakers are at Oklahoma City at 5 o'clock. Will the Lakers stay above 500? And why in the hell should I be asking that question in the first place, right? Boston is at the Clippers today over at Crypto.com at 1230. It's a double dip over at the Crypt. Because Calgary is playing the Kings at 7 o'clock. What do you say we get to the news? One thing that has been a concern with the Dodgers offseason has basically been about the scribes. They've been the ones that have been launching all these crazy rumors in the first place. They had We had as many as 38 rumors. Of course, only four of them wound up with the Dodgers. Not exactly the greatest batting average. But now the scribes are all getting their group think on. They're all describing the Dodgers offseason as they've spent a billion with a B. Now, I haven't said billion with a B because I believe very strongly that you guys know how to spell. I think you are pretty much aware that billion starts with a B. Call me reactionary. Maybe a couple of you guys didn't watch Sesame Street when you were little, but I'm pretty confident you know billion starts with a B. Thanks for nothing, American journalists. But here is the thing that really is weird about the Dodgers and how they've invested their money. LA is still only third in terms of the highest payroll with the competitive balance tax. Isn't that crazy? Oh, they're still above. They're going to get taxed. But the, they're not even the number one payroll in baseball as, as, as compiled in, in how you get taxed. LA's payroll for next year stands at $282 million with an M. But the Mets and the Yankees actually pay more against the uh, competitive balance tax. The Mets lead Major League Baseball at $298 million. So despite the massive splurge, to give you an idea of how much money that the Dodgers tried to get under the cap so they could basically throw it at Shohei Otani, that's, a, that's an indicator. 
Meanwhile, though, Sports Illustrated is going along with a second line that the scribes have been really hyping up. That the Dodgers spent more this offseason than every other team combined. Wow, that is so bad for baseball. Here are the Dodgers, and they've spent all of this money more than anybody, all the other teams combined. Here are two reasons why this is crap, why you should not care. Had any other team signed Shohei Otani, and there were at least, what, eight teams interested in Shohei Otani? There were eight other teams interested in Yoshinobu Yamamoto. We know this. This argument would have completely fallen flat. Right? If the Giants signed Yamamoto, this doesn't make a, this doesn't make a difference. If the Blue Jays actually were the team to sign Shohei Otani, the Dodgers would have basically spent chump change through the entire offseason. So this argument is creating a false narrative. They're trying to make it look like Major League Baseball is literally the Dodgers and all other 29 teams are the Oakland A's. That is crap. No way in hell. Sorry. Patently not true. And two, frankly, if I were to blame anybody, I would blame Slime Diego. Remember, they were the guys last offseason who sped off the charts, blasted out their entire minor league system to try to build a super team. There they were, puffing out their chest, spending big money, bunch of middle-aged white guys rapping down the sidewalk. Well, thanks, Slime Diego. You done made Andrew Friedman mad. And look what happened. Not a good idea to get under Andrew Friedman's skin. I must tell you. By the way, regarding any other potential Dodger add-ons, Ken Rosenthal is reporting that the Rangers are undeterred by Clayton Kershaw not being able to pitch in the first half of the season while he recovers from shoulder surgery. Therefore, the Clayton Kershaw market is very simple. It's a coin flip between Texas and the Dodgers. I mentioned yesterday that when your team has a snowball's chance on skid row of making the playoffs, uh, you'll hear about players coming up with injuries to avoid playing the rest of the NFL schedule. After all, why put your body on the line if they're not going to get any reward out of it, right? I had no idea that the Chargers were actually going to flip the script and just fire people before they could get hurt in the first place. Yeah. The Bolts cut a team captain yesterday in defensive lineman Sebastian Joseph Day. The dude started all 14 games for the Bolts this year. Now, you might be wondering why, you know, like they, he got cut today as Festivus. The poor bastard's out of a job. Here's your list of grievances right there. Christmas is in a couple of days. You're sitting there going, did Sebastian Joseph Day say something bad about Dean Spanos at the holiday party or what? But the God's honest truth. Joseph Day is out of a job because it's a salary cap move. We've been talking about it all season long. The fact that the Chargers were going to be tens of million dollars over the cap going into next season. And at that point, they still even hadn't renegotiated Justin Herbert's contract extension. So they are going to be super over the cap. They needed to start making moves at some point. I at least would have waited till the end of the year, but they were like, to hell with it, dude. We're saving the money now. I am okay if you tell me that it's not right to try to forecast a lot when USC basketball beats Alabama State. I hear you. Loud and clear, I do. But the baby steps that Bronny James has to make on his return from cardiac arrest, that's something to pay attention to. Both Isaiah Collier and coach Andy Enfield were encouraged because James got tired. And instead of clutching his chest like Red Fox in a 1970s sitcom saying that he's about to go off and die, going to the white light, he kept shooting. 
He was shooting threes even though he did not have his legs properly conditioned. Quote, he's a terrific shooter. He just needs to be able to shoot when he gets winded. He was able to run and make a couple of threes when he was somewhat tired, unquote. Now, this is from Coach Enfield. Now, again, if you're saying, James, so what? That's really not a big deal. I have a two-word counter-argument for you. Cardiac arrest doesn't mean you put Bronny James in the, in the lottery, of course. It doesn't mean that the Trojans don't have myriad problems to solve because they, just like UCLA basketball, just like the Lakers, are all middling around 500. But yeah, dude had a heart attack in the summer and he's now playing major college basketball. We're just waiting to see if he can do it at a high level. Some good news for the UCLA football program. Guard Spencer Holstedge had a change of heart. He is pulled out of the transfer portal. This is extremely helpful for the Bruins. No doubt about it. He started every game at left guard last year. And I also believe that this matters a lot. Because despite the fact that UCLA tends to run kind of a spread offense with Chip Kelly, they're actually very fundamentally sound in the running game. There's not a whole lot of wide running. You run between the tackles in Chip Kelly's offense, which means if you're between the tackles, you need guards you can depend on. So we are assuming that Holstead is going to be that guy that the Bruins are going to depend on when they go to the Big Ten. USC safety Max Williams said he will declare for the NFL draft after the Holiday Bowl. He said if he had stayed with the Trojans, he'd be 24 years old and still in college. Which honestly, if you're 24 and you're still in college, that is something that's literally reserved for trust fund babies named Chad. Let's be honest. If you're hitting your mid-20s and you're still jerking around at college on a college campus, particularly on the football team, that's just not a good look. That has arena leagues written all over it, right? So Max Williams is like, hey, I can't stay anymore. I got to give it my shot. Now, granted, that does weaken the USC backfield a little bit, but the LA Times has noted, let me rephrase. The LA Times noted that UCLA is going to have to, or USC is going to have to replace three of its five starting defensive backs, which might not be true. Because Alex Grinch always ran a nickel defense with the speed D. De'Anton Lynn is more traditional. You might only have to replace three of four instead of three of five. Either way, either way, despite having lost Max Williams, the Trojans have four defensive backs coming in via the transfer portal. So there are people coming in. I'm not going to sit there and be doom and gloom and claim all this lost. It's most definitely not. But you let me know what you think in the comments thread. Talk to me about whether you think the Dodgers have irreparably harmed Major League Baseball. Talk to me about who else the Chargers should cut that the outside observer would think is extremely valuable. And if you enjoy the content, don't forget to subscribe to Faithful Angelinos. We talk LA sports every single day here. Thank you for watching. I'm James. We'll be back tomorrow. Faithful Angelinos is a Kian Corte El Queso production. Take care.